What's up Radical fans, I'm here with John Heffernan, the creator of Driver for the Dead. We are about to meet with Lindsay Powell, the winner of the Driver for the Dead contest. So uh, why don't you come with us and check it out. Hello, this is Lindsay. Hi, how are you doing? Hey Lindsay, how are you doing? Nice to talk to you. Um, yeah, you guys too, how are you? Good, good, very good. Congratulations on winning the Driver for the Dead contest. Thank you for answering. Uh, cheers. Cheers. It was my mate that put me on to it. He's quite a radical fanboy, so I think he was secretly quite disappointed <laughs> that, that I won rather than him. But yeah. c'est la vie. I'm not disappointed. I'd actually rather be talking to a pretty girl, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever works, I suppose. <laughs> but I'm glad that he's a Driver for the Dead fan and a radical fan also. Thank you. I ah, know, no worries. It was a magic book actually, really, really good. Nice to win it as well because it's probably not something I'd have picked up myself and it's good, good book. Thank you, thank you. What was your favourite part? Um, I really liked the bad guys team, Fallow, yeah. when they're going around getting involved with everyone's, uh, their, own, their own individual powers, chopping off hands, all that kind of stuff. Oh. A bit gory but good. Yeah, they're a bunch of mean bastards, huh? I definitely, definitely. So where do what did you, you do to think up, to think up all the disgusting things that they would do? You know, I got a warped mind. Uh, sick childhood, not, mm -hmm. a, not a broken home exactly, but uh, you know, covered with shame. I mean, covered with shame. A lot of inner secrets, yeah. turmoil, stuff that kind of had to come out on the page. That kind of thing. You know, the, the story. <laughs> I can see the scars. They're coming across. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, doing it in a comic book form is a, is a healthy outlet, probably healthier than some of the other roads I could have taken in the past. Mm -hmm. And where do you live in Scotland? I am Glasgow. Glasgow. Just outside. We love, tiny village. Really I, lovely. I love Glasgow. Two of my favorite people are from Glasgow. Oh, really? Craig Ferguson and Gordon Ramsay. I love them both. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if I ever go okay. to Glasgow, i got to come look you up. I hear good things about a restaurant on the, in the West End called the Ubiquitous Chip. Have you ever eaten there? Ah, the Ubiquitous Chip is yeah. good. Yep, yeah. it's very good. Loads of good pubs around about there as well. It's a great place. Really good. All right, well, that's my first stop if I go. There's two things i got to go whenever I go to Scotland. I, I had once a, a history teacher in high school who taught me, he was a crazy guy, completely out of his mind, and he said, if you ever find yourself in Scotland, you gotta make your way to Hadrian's Wall. And you gotta sit on top of Hadrian's Wall and you gotta eat a jelly roll. And you gotta think about the past. <laughs> What's so, a jelly roll? Is that a piece of jam? I have no idea. I thought you knew. I, I think it's maybe like, oh. a, like a jelly donut. Well, whatever it is, if I find myself like around that area, I'll, I'll find one. I'm resourceful right. like that. What well, about you? What's your kind of comic things? What are you into? Comic stuff. Um, well. I'm into a lot of stuff, to be honest with you. I mean, a couple of, uh, of my favorite writers are uh, are Scotsman. I like Grant Morrison mm -hmm. a lot. I like Mark Miller a lot. Um, Thanks. And uh, my favorite writer, I think, working right now is probably Garth Ennis, um, who's uh. obviously an Irishman, but but still, he's got a, just a, a wicked sense of humor, and his mm -hmm. his dialogue's really great, and just the way he kind of um, I don't know uh, subverts the medium while at the same yeah. time sort of uh, obviously is faithful to it and has a great story sense and respect for comics and uh, and yet uh, a healthy sort of disdain for the superhero culture and politics and religion and everything else. The way that guy makes it work is incredible. He's one of those guys that takes things forward yeah. and then everyone else kind of cements around it, I think. Yeah, I think. Really, really pushy that. I think you're uh, But yeah, no, we're kind of spoiled for choice in Scotland. There's so many excellent writers, excellent artists. Definitely spoiled for choice. Now I know you write a blog for um, for a comics website. Do you also work at a comic book store, or what do you do for a day job? No, I don't. I spend as much of my wages there. I probably should, but I'm a carer for the elderly. Really? Uh, the week, yeah. So that's that's the day job. The blog is a relatively new thing that I mean, a good my friends are doing, but it's going pretty well. So we're quite happy with it. Yeah. If it gets us some free comics and cheap entries to conventions, we're quite happy. Yeah, I mean, what more can you ask for? Really, that'll keep you going. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you, uh, that you enjoyed Driver for the Dead, and that your, your, your mate turned you on to it. Um, any other radical books that you guys uh, read or, or are interested in? Uh, well, my mate Gary, who's kind of the resident radical reader, uh, what's the other book? It's something that Sam Worthington's attached to. Yeah. He's right into, it and he's lent me, a, lent me, I think, two issues of that. But I've not got around to reading them yet, though. I've had a flick though, and the thing that really stands out, but like this Driver for the Dead and this other book, is the art. It's yeah. unreal. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, totally different from anything else you see. It's brilliant. 
Well, that would be the work of the great Leonardo Manco, who is yeah. uh, just a superior talent. I mean, in every sense of the word. He, uh, working with him on Driver for the Dead was an unbelievable privilege for me. The guy is, uh, is super talented, really great to work with. He's a machine in terms of just speed and efficiency. I'll put the stuff out there expecting it to take months. And a couple weeks later, I'll open up my inbox and they'll be like, you know, 10 fully inked pages just waiting for me. Mm. And um, it's really interesting because he is actually Argentinian. He's from uh, Buenos Aires. And okay. um, but we have kind of, I guess, similar tastes in terms of what we like in movies and music and even cars mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so to get to work with him was, was fantastic. And, and uh, the way he did things like Draw the Hearse, Black Betty, it just kept getting cooler and cooler, the stuff that he would keep adding to it, you know? So, um, so that was fun working with him. And uh, he took his colorist, a uh, guy named Kinson Lowe, we work with with Driver on Dead. He took that to his this new book from Radical and Sam Worthington's full clip productions called Damaged, which is out in stores now. And right. it's uh that is a thrill ride. I mean that's written by a guy named David Lapham. But the story is by Sam and Michael Schwartz and John Schwartz, right? And I guess together they can they comprise full clip productions, but the story's very cool. David does a great job bringing it to the page, and then like you said, Leo just knocks it out of the park in terms of his artwork. Um and I, he just gets better and better and better. And, um, you know, we're, uh, we're really looking forward to maybe doing something else together. I know he's coming out here in the end of the year. He said he was coming out to visit L.A. So we got some, some good stuff to talk about, him and me. And uh, maybe you'll be seeing something else from us together again soon. Excellent. That'd be magic. Yeah. That'd be magic. So you, you, um, you worked on Snakes on a Plane. I, I did indeed, yeah. Uh, what have you been doing since then? Any other comics? Anything else where we can see your stuff? Well, you know what? No other comics as of yet. Um, that's something which I'm in talks with, in preliminary talks with a couple of places. Um, obviously, we'd love to do some more stuff for Radical, but for mm -hmm. mainly a lot of the stuff that's been taking up my free time, I don't have a lot of free time, but this, the free time I do have um, has been going towards movie type stuff. And okay. uh, the things that I've been working on recently are I've got a project which I recently sold to uh, Paramount. Um, the working title on it was Abducted. Um, but it's basically Die Hard in a UFO. It's about a down in this little construction worker whose truck breaks down in the middle of the desert and he gets out to check the engine. Next thing you know, beamed aboard an alien spaceship. The kind of hook of it is, is the guy served overseas in Afghanistan and he's got a metal plate in his head. So the, uh, the, I guess the, the freeze array that the aliens are using on him that usually keep people sedate while they do things like the crazy horrible experiments and anal probing doesn't work on this guy and it wears off and he ends up getting loose and now he's wandering the bowels of this massive alien spaceship that's orbiting the earth and he's got to get back home somehow. How does he do it? So that's set up at Paramount with um, Mary Parent's company Disruption and uh, Bender Spink um, producing. Uh, so that's been really cool working with them. Uh, the other stuff I'm working on is uh, uh, something called Time Travel Mutiny, which is uh, pretty mm -hmm. self-explanatory. It's another working title about uh, two groups of soldiers sent back in time, one with the intention of saving history, one with the intention of ruling it. And that's something I've been working on with um, Brian Grazer and uh, Ron Howard's company, Imagine, as well as Blacklight Transmedia with Zach Caddison, who I work with developing the, uh, the property initially. And they've got their first look with Imagine. So we're, um, we're really... Uh, happy to be working on that together. There are a bunch of great, great guys over at Blacklight and check out their other stuff. Zach is a, is a very cool guy. Um, what else have I been working on? I've been working on um, a TV show idea, which I've been kind of talking to some people about. About It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have the show The Shield over in Scotland, but yeah. it's the show, it's kind of like that, except think about that like um, in a, uh, a border patrol office, like along the um, the lawless frontier of the U.S.-Mexico border, out in the middle of nowhere where nobody can see what's going on. It's just like crazy, crazy Wild West stuff that's going on out there. So we're th uh, developing with a, the TV show uh, idea, going to a couple of different companies, talking about some possible angles there. But I'm always looking to do um, new comic book stuff. You know, I, I, I've been reading comics since I was a kid. Um, since I was about like six years old or seven years old, I, I, I would start mowing, out, mowing my grandmother's lawn for like two bucks. And back mm -hmm. then, you got to understand, comics cost about 50 cents. So I, I, I saved a dollar, and I took the other dollar to the local convenience store. And um, I bought a package of Twinkies for 50 cents, and I brought a comic for the other 50 cents, right? And I'd be sitting down there, like on the floor of the convenience store, just like eating Twinkies and reading comics. Yeah. 
and it was it was great. I remember uh, Batman was my favorite back then. Um, I also remember like the the really early days of Firestorm, like when they first kind of like came out with Firestorm. I enjoyed him a little bit. So I guess I kind of started off as a as a DC guy, and um, then of course I, I got more into Marvel. And as my taste matured, this was right around the time when comics were kind of growing up. I guess you would say. Um, yeah. Where. Kind of like in the late 80s where uh, Watchmen had come out and Crisis on Infinite Earths had come out and um, mm -hmm. Sandman was coming out and, and these sort of like, I guess you would say more more adult kind of books were coming out, but still from, from the major publishers. And um, and I, I guess my tastes matured along with them. And then from there it was all systems go, you know. It was uh, indie books and uh, some, some little publishers and, and more, uh, more adult kind of fare. But... Um, yeah, I never really left it. I just, a lot of people, like you were talking about before, I find that they, they kind of like leave comics, but then the, the, the true fans always end up coming back. Some people uh -huh. have likened it to an addiction. And I, I guess that's kind of accurate. I mean, it's an escapist kind of thing that you can't really shake, but if it's an addiction, it's, uh, it's not a bad one. I don't mind being addicted to good writing and good art and good story and characters. That's it. If you've got to choose between heroin and <laughs> comics, then really there is only... I don't know. Heroin might, might be cheaper up. these days. That's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might, <laughs> you might save a little money that way. Um, well, your idea for Driving from the Dead, mm. when you were planning that, did you decide that you wanted that to be a comic book story? Or was it the story that you came up with first of all, and then you decide I could put this out as a comic book? How did it come about? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, it came about... Uh, I don't know if you have Denny's restaurants in Scotland. No, but I know of them. They're a fantastic American restaurant. In fact, I don't know where you can find a better chicken fried steak with um, right. country biscuits at 4 o'clock in the morning in Oxnard, California. But that's where I found myself. Um, and I was reading this article in this local paper about a hearse driver who got carjacked at, at gunpoint. And they, authorities later, they found the, the, the hearse, but they never found the body. And um, that got me to thinking, you know, why would they do that? Why would they take the body? And I started doing research on it, and I found that it's it's a more common phenomenon than you think, this whole idea of body snatching and hearse jacking. And from there, the idea kind of grew. I knew I wanted to set it in New Orleans. Um, I love New Orleans. I used to live there for a little while. It's um, it's a fantastic city and a great place to set a story like this. So uh, the, the, the character came first of Alabaster Graves as a, as a driver for the dead. And then the story sort of grew around him and his world and that world of this kind of mythic, um, creepy, sultry Louisiana. And then it was the question of, of what to do with it. I always wanted to do it as a comic. Um, I had been wanting to do a comic for a long time. And I knew I wanted to do my own book. I wanted to do a, a creator-owned or, or co-owned book. Um, and I, but ultimately, I thought it could also have some potential of migrating to the, to the screen if possible. So I wanted to find the right company to work for. Um, to, that would help me realize that vision and eventually help me see it through. And Radical was the perfect fit for that. Um, I, I, a producer who I spoke with the idea about early on, um, a guy named Josh McLaughlin, who was over at Mark Gordon Company, um, I pitched the idea to him. He asked me if I'd heard of Radical. I said, of course. So we went in to uh, pitch the idea to Barry Levine, publisher of Radical, who just took to the story and the idea right away and, and loved it. And um, we uh, we started going. We started doing it. We got Renee Gearlings uh, to to edit the book, who's our fantastic editor here at Radical. Um, we looked at a couple of artists. Uh, a guy named Clint, Clint Langley, who's a, just a, a really really fantastic artist, did the the first cover um, for uh, for the book, which I think is now the cover that they use in some of the um, the trade paperback editions that are available, maybe in the overseas market. But for the interiors, um, we found Leo. And he, he just knocked it out of the park. He did a great, great job. And I was everybody was just blown away by this guy's artwork. As you said before, you look at this stuff, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It yeah, jumps off cool. the page. Um, and from there, um, it was uh, it was off to the races. We got the book uh, set up and uh, put out and uh, published, and people seemed to respond to it. So thank you. Excellent. And is, is there um, an intentional likeness between uh, most Freeman and a certain other actor <laughs> being Who might something. also be named Freeman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you how that went. The, 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 the direction that I gave to Leonardo in the script was, I said that it was like in the, one of the first panel descriptions, and Mose was getting out of the cab, and he was kind of like approaching the, the house where the exorcism was to take place. And mm -hmm. the, the direction that I gave to Leo was, okay, stepping out of the back of the cab is in 
old black man in an old brown suit. He could be 50, he could be 100. It's impossible to say. He's old, dignified, kind of like a cross between Morgan Freeman and Nelson Mandela was exactly how I described it to, to Leonardo. I, I think the problem is, is I didn't really realize or take into account how great an artist Leonardo was. I didn't realize he'd be able to do such a dead-on portrait of Morgan Freeman that everybody who looked at the yeah. character was going to be like, yeah, that's that's Morgan Freeman. Um, and that's the way Leo draw, drew him. And it's it's funny in a way because everybody does comment on that. But it's also good in a way because now when you know studio executives look at this book, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, that's, that's Morgan Freeman. We could probably get him for this part. And it kind of makes the book easier in some ways to set up as a movie. And to be honest, I couldn't think of a better person I would cast in that role anyway. I mean, even if he didn't look like Freeman in the book, like Moe's Freeman in the book, I still would want Morgan Freeman to play that guy. I think the only thing I might have done differently is maybe give him a different name, a slightly more distinctive name. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's actually a, a TV advert that's on over here just now, and I'll see if I can send you the YouTube link, and it involves uh, a Morgan Freeman impersonator. It's for Karen students, and he just stands there and goes, Hi, I'm more than Freeman. <laughs> so it's more than Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, yeah, man. That's magic. More than free. And what about Alabaster Graves then? If you get anyone in mind, if it was to progress. <sighs> Who would you have a name for him? For him for casting for a movie? Yeah. That's 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 a better question. That's a really big question. Um, I, it's kind of funny the way the way Leo drew him in the book. It kind of changes a little bit. I think as as the book progresses, I think he kind of looks like Gerard Butler sometimes, another great Scotsman, and I think he kind of looks um, I don't know, maybe like Clive Owen sometimes, and it, it, his appearance changes a little bit. But for who I would get to play Graves. You know, he's got to have, he's got to be charismatic. He's got to have kind of a the ability to pull off a southern accent, of course, and have that southern kind of charm. When I think about that, I think Matthew McConaughey would probably be pretty good. But on the other hand, um, I'm a big fan of the actor um, Thomas Jane, who uh, he was in um, the Shark movie, uh, Deep Blue Sea. He was in the first Punisher movie. He mm -hmm. he's now on a TV series on HBO called Hung, about a gigolo with uh, basically a big cock. And uh, he hasn't. <laughs> it hasn't come out. It's good. You can probably watch it. On, watch it online. Um, and you know, I could imagine Alabaster Graves is probably similarly endowed. So I think he could probably pull off that role, and uh, he'd be good. But really, it's a uh, man. That, that that's just such an open question. Everybody has their own ideas of who would bring the yeah. most to that character. I think it's kind of like sending it out to actors, and if and when we get to that stage, seeing who brings the most to the table. You know, there could be a, an unknown out there, like a Hugh Jackman type. Who would just uh, who was relatively unknown before you got Wolverine, who could come in and just nail that thing, you know, on a screen test, and um, and he would be the guy. So it's uh, it's it's pretty much up for grabs. Who do you think would be a good choice? Hmm. Um. There's a couple of Brits, like you see, Jared Butler. I'm not so sure about Clive Owen. Yep. I think it's in with a shout, but then can he do the accent? That's the big question. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I guess so. I liked him a lot. And shoot him up. Um, I liked mm -hmm. him in Sin City. I mean, the guy's definitely got that, that uh, tough guy action star appeal, and I think he's also got some pretty good acting chops as well. So I wouldn't be um, opposed to that at all. I think if you get the guy like out of the sun for a little while, get him that nice vampire pale kind of complexion, maybe some black hair dye going on, and uh, you know, put him behind the wheel of a big hearse, that's, uh, that, he can pull it off. I agree with you. Excellent. Well, best of luck with it, John. Definitely get the basis for something really cool. It's a great read, so... Lots of cool things in it that could be good, and people eat up true blood and all that kind of thing, so there's no reason why it couldn't work. They do, don't they? Well, thank you very much, Lindsay. I really appreciate it. No, no worries, no worries. Um, thanks very much. So cool. Well, thank you. We'll keep in touch, and um, uh, uh, follow follow me on Twitter. I'm following you on Twitter, and uh, check me out at, uh, if you want to, at uh, my website, which is dysgraphicpictures.com. And you can also, of course, follow along at RadicalPublishing.com, DriverForTheDead.com, or just do a Google search for Driver for the Dead. We are all over the place. But if I come to Glasgow, which I will be, I'm definitely going to look you up, so count on that. Uh, you let us know. We'll show you the sites and make sure you get a good few beers and <laughs> enjoy your day. Maybe even a wee Celtic game. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Let's do it. Thank you, Lindsay. Really great talking to you. All right. Nice one. Take care. Okay, bye -bye. See you later.